Four Nights of the Apocalypse chapter 140 is out, and man, was this a chapter filled with revelations and reveals. We also got the names of all of King of the Ants' children, as well as some really important information pertaining to Nazian's actual secret. It also has a lot of Diore and Nazian's in the lake, swimming. And I would have to censor so much in the opening pages of this chapter. So, bear with me as I am most likely just going to have either a lot of censorship, or just images of Teori and Nazienz that don't pertain to the actual images in the chapter, and just throw in images from the chapter that I don't need to censor at all for particular types of information. So please bear with me for that, but that's only for the opening pages of the chapter. Before we get into this review, don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell for updates on future videos, it really helps, and it shows you guys enjoy the content I'm making on the channel, and show that you want to see more. Also, thank you all for over 10,000 subscribers since the last time I made a video, I am so happy. I will make a video for 10k at some point, but I just want to say thank you all so much, I really, really appreciate it. Now with that out of the way, let's jump right into this chapter. Chapter 140 of Fortnite's The Apocalypse titled, The Shape of of truth. And the cover image is just Nazien's studying and making herbs with Tiore sitting around in the background, probably wanting to try and prank him. So the opening pages start off with Tiore giving a narration about the fairy tree in the sky, saying, hey, what did you think when you first saw the fairy realm's uh, sky is green? They say it's spread out leaves of the sacred tree. Can you believe that? The tree's trunk is so far away, we can't see it from here. But the top is filled with lots of strange plants. Only my dad, the Fairy King, is allowed up there. Tiara goes on to say that that giant mountain-like mushroom there, it's called God's Seat. They grow on the sacred roots of the sacred fairy tree. Isn't that amazing? As she just jumps into the lake and pops up right behind Nazienz. And as she's just chatting with Nazienz, Nazienz ends up asking, how long did you know that I'm not a man and not a girl either? So that is a big revelation. I had an assumption that Nazienz was probably secretly a woman, or maybe even potentially trans, but there were also people in the comments saying that Nazian's was neither. So, it looks like a knockabout went with Nazian's not having either gender for this. So, Teori just goes on smokily saying that, don't kid yourself, it was easy. You always bathed by yourself, so I just took a peek. And Nazian's obviously embarrassed on this, and Teori catches up and like, oh right, that's not really a thing with humans, you're not supposed to look in on people. And Nazian says, well, of course, I'm not a man or a woman, so of course I would hide it. So, before Tiori says anything else about Nazien, she actually goes on a nice big exposition dump that I think we all kind of needed, as we actually go on to her naming all of her siblings. So we finally get to know all the names of her siblings, and she is the seventh youngest, so she just goes by order of who's the oldest. So she starts with the, the one that looks the most like King, saying that Sixtus, my second oldest sibling, has a lot of fairy, fairy blood in him, but he hates how he never grew any wings. And Belt, my third oldest, hates how he has the only pointy ears out of our whole family. But she says she doesn't see the fuss. She then goes on to talk about her two oldest sisters, Zana and Zillium, the fourth and fifth oldest. They inherited a large amount of giant blood, but they're a lot shorter than the average giants, and it bothers them a lot. And she goes on to say that the sixth oldest, Fao, they still know whether or not she'll be a, her brother or her sister yet, as this shocks Nazien's, as... We kind of assumed that this was her sister, but Tiora goes on and says that apparently when Fao falls in love with a man, someday she'll become a girl, but if she falls in love with a woman, she'll become a man. And apparently that's what happens with fairies pretty often in the fairy clan. Nazian thinks about that and says how that's kind of strange, but Tiora says it's not to us fairies. As this is a very interesting thing about the fairy clan. Apparently th their gender is dependent on who they fall in love with, which is an interesting piece of lore that I didn't know we really needed, but this is just nice to fully flesh out the fairy clan as it is basically just because of like the fairy blood. Now this is gonna tie back into Nazien's as Nazien's pauses after hearing this with Tiori just staring at him as Nazien's gets up and says like, wait, are you saying, what are you saying? I'm human. As Tiori's just like, why do you say that? Cause humans pick you up? As Nazien's just like, no, that's not what I mean. I don't have wings and I can't even fly. As Tiori just shoots Nazians down and says, well, there are a lot of flightless fairies. It's actually pretty common. And didn't you say you're feeling healthier since you came to the fairy realm? As Tiori just goes on to say, well, that's what's strange here. Because normally a human wouldn't be okay at all trying to live here. As this shocks Nazians, as Nazians asks, why is that? 
as Teori just says that the air in the fairy realm is really thick and sweet, and it's actually pretty bad for humans. It may not kill you, but spend too much time and it causes dizziness and asthma. It makes you frailer. As this shocks Nazienz, as obviously, Teori just says, So if you ask me, Nazienz, there's no way you're not part of the fairy clan. Fully revealing that Nazienz not only has no gender right now, but is a fairy, just like King in the End and Teori. Which, look, we all kind of figured that Nazienz might be a fairy. And this was a huge theory ever since Nazienz's introduction. And a lot of things get confirmed in this chapter, which a lot of people predicted. And I do think that the way all this has been revealed, actually not bad. And I think it really does add more to Nazienz and perhaps even adds a whole new layer to Nazienz's story with perhaps an identity crisis. Being raised as a human, believing that they're human, but also being different from humans in this one aspect and the fact that Nazienz doesn't seem to have a gender. And now we've learned that Nazienz is a fairy, their gender will be dependent on who they fall in love with. So that is an interesting piece of lore and also adds more into Nazienz and I feel like this will probably add a whole conflict to Nazienz's identity and how he talks with his friends and how he's basically evaluating his entire life. As Nazienz begins to think that them being a fairy is kind of crazy. But Teori goes on and explains that that's why humans who visit this realm have to take a mullen pill on a regular basis. And we get brief little exposition saying that it's from an herb that, that's good for asthma and uh, coughing and that they actually give resistance to toxins as Nazian stinks back to their fight with Myrtle and that Myrtle took this pill after their fight and says that's probably why their poison didn't affect them that much or maybe not as he took it after their battle which means he took it before as well as Nazian comes to a realization about Myrtle as then cuts to Myrtle with the fairy as they have just finished basically swapping back the babies before any actual harm could have happened. And he tells the fairy that pulled this prank, hopefully you don't do that again. As Merle just says, all right, you're free to go. And sorry for pointing my blade at you. As it does kind of shock the fairy as well. And then this also points back into what Teori said last chapter where Myrtle is pretty kind to all the fairies. So obviously he didn't want to point a blade at another fairy, but he just was afraid that shit would go bad. Merle looks down at the fairy baby and says, I envy you. Anyone can tell that you're a fairy. I see a flashback to, <laughs> to Myrtle as a child, as people are like, hey Myrtle, are you really the son of the fairy king and giant queen? As he then ends up talking back to him and says, of course, I'm Harley Quinn and the Yan's son. That's true. As Merle begins to cough uncontrollably. As he then cut to him with King and the Yan as they give him a mullen pill telling him he has to take it regularly. The Ann says that it's bitter, but it's for his own health. We cut to Myrtle a bit older as he's training, gaining muscle and learning how to wield a sword, with other fairies going off wondering what's Myrtle doing and reveal that he is training and that he's kind of a weirdo. Myrtle also hears other comments from other fairies, we presume, as they go on to say, why is the son of the fairy king unable to fly? He's awfully small to be the giant queen's son. And this is actually comments that people have had with the previous chapter after we got the reveal of King and the Ant's children, which is pretty interesting to see. We then cut to King and the Ant as they begin to comfort and talk to Myrtle, saying, Don't push it too much, alright? No need to worry about what people say. The Ant goes on to say, You're fine just the way you are. After all, you're a precious son, no matter what. As Myrtle goes on to say in an internal monologue, I'm fully aware of the unconditional love I've received from them. But whenever my mother and father offer me their kind comfort like that, I just feel like the anxiety could crush me. It begins to think, what if I wasn't your actual child? What if I was a changeling? As what people were speculating from the last chapter as well. As this comes from a literal person that talked, probably a fairy, that, ta that said this in Myrtle's presence, saying like, Myrtle looks nothing like his parents and siblings, huh? As it then cut to what we see as presumably the day Nazians entered the fairy realm, as Merle goes on to think, would, would you say the same things to me if your actual son ever came to your doorstep? As Nazians comes by, first meeting, and says, I'll be staying here for a while. As a second Myrtle looks at Nazians, he puts two and two together and says, he looks like them. So if any real things of people saying that Nazians might not be the child of King in the end, this seems like Myrtle is full on confirming that Nazian is a changeling baby of King and the Anne. Now, this makes us question 
How did King and the Ant not go searching for their child after this whole thing? Why did they just keep the human child? Maybe something happened. We'll probably get more information sometime soon. But that piece of information of, of Nazians being a changeling, while a big revelation, also makes you question what King and the Ant were doing these last 16 years before Nazians showed up in the forest. And yeah, for sure, King of the End probably know that Nazians is their actual child that went missing so many years ago. But that's neither here nor there. We'll probably get an explanation within future chapters. And I like how this adds into Myrtle's like own identity crisis, as he seems to be a human child based off what we got from two and two together with the information we got from this chapter. As he doesn't look like anything but King of the End, he can't fly, he doesn't have wings. He doesn't seem to have any type of magic based off of the fairy or giant clans whatsoever. He has to take pills that are required for a human to stay here. It's fairly obvious that he is human and he is not King of the Ants' biological child. And since he had to grow up with this mentality, with everything that was going on, this obviously adds more to his own insecurities. And I think this is great. This adds in to making Myrtle a more fleshed out character. And this also adds more depth to, well, King of the Ants' other children. Primarily the, the two fairies and the two older giant giant sisters, as since they're of mi their mixed blood, they don't really seem like a lot of the other fairies. The, the second oldest has no wings and is relatively short. The, the, the third oldest basically just has wings, but has pointier ears compared to the rest of the family, but doesn't seem anything too abnormal. But the giant sisters are a lot shorter than regular giants, and that bothers them a lot, especially amongst other giants and even their mother. So that adds into a whole new layer of, well, an identity with these characters. Now, whether or not Nakaba will go into full detail into each of these other characters and give them their own moments to shine, I doubt that. That was my main concern when, when introducing Tiore and having her have six other siblings. Right now, Tiore and Myrtle most likely are going to have the most uh, development out of the entirety of the of King of the Ants' children. But that's just my thought process on it. Now, we can see what the chapters to cut back to Myrtle in the present day as the fairy is calling out to Myrtle. As Myrtle's like, oh right, you're still here. Sorry, the rope. As he then notices something's wrong with the aroma. As the fairy he's with begins to basically foam at the mouth and begins to collapse and even notices that this is starting to happen to the fairy baby. As someone off in the distance says, what's the meaning of this? This poisonous incense has an immense effect on fairies, so why? As Myrtle hears this voice and says, who's there? Show yourself. As we see five hooded figures in the distance, with the final page of the chapter being Myrtle facing off against what, what I can say are chaos knights, stating, wait, you're human, aren't you? Confirming that Myrtle is human, but also what's interesting is that this is the exact same I presume chaos knight or chaos creature That gave the prophecy of the four nights of the apocalypse in chapter 5 We have not seen this particular character since chapter 5 Meaning that we're finally get to see what this person who gave the prophecy looks like and perhaps They might be someone we know in the past that's been chaosified or maybe a brand new character People from what I've seen when the spoilers dropped stating that this might be a uh, Morgan Le Fay from Arthurian Legend, and that could be true. That would be pretty interesting for us to actually dive into. But yeah, that's how this chapter ends. And I have to say, really good chapter. I think Nakba did a pretty decent job with the Nazian's mystery, even though I personally do think that he's not the best at doing mysteries. We all know everything that's uh, happened with Gawain, their power and appearance looking a lot like Merlin and Escanor. But Nazian's being the child of king in the end has been something that people have speculated for a while, but it wasn't really, you know, hinted at or shown to us too much. And people only really started to speculate that Nazians might be a fairy based off of a volume entry stating that Nazians was human with a question mark. So now full on Nazians is confirmed to be a fairy. And as well, Nazians does not have a gender as Nazians has not fallen in love with somebody. So, Sonia Percival is a crush and hasn't evolved into full-on love yet. That's interesting for us to get with actual fairy lore. And it was nice to get some actual stuff for the fairy clan as we still don't know all too much about them. So this is some very nice pieces of information. And now Myrtle is going to face off seemingly against five Chaos Knights, one of which probably just being a Chaos Mage. And this is outside of the fairy realm, so he's not protected by King and the Anne. 
So I'm curious to see where this is going to lead into. Hopefully we get to showcase what Myrtle is truly capable of. Maybe he'll even unlock his own magical power in this fight. Who knows? This might end up leading to the downfall of the Fairy Realm or an attack on the Fairy Realm for all we know. But that's really all I got for you for this chapter. I discussed what I needed to discuss, and this was a really big one, and I'm really happy I covered it. The censoring at the beginning, or just full on not showing multiple pages and panels, is something that I regret, but it was worth it just to talk about the events of this chapter. But what did you guys think? Leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below, and if you haven't already, like and subscribe, hit the notification bell for updates on future videos, it really helps, it shows you guys enjoy the content I'm making on the channel, and shows you want to see more. And with all that said and done, hope you all, have an awesome day.